Hi and welcome to PeaceMeg TV. In this fundamental WordPress video, we're going to be checking out how easy it is to start working with posts inside WordPress. I'm going to take you through the basics of creating categories, how to create a post, and some of the basic fundamentals you need to know when working with posts inside WordPress. So let's check out all of that right now. So if you're new to WordPress, you may find it's a little confusing to sort of tell the difference between a post and a page. Fundamentally, they do the same kind of thing. But in practice, you'll tend to find that pages are more used for static content. For example, your home page, your contact page, and so on. Whereas posts are more sort of where you want to have content that people can interact with through comments. You may want to have a post that kind of links through to multiple different categories. So for example, you may have something that's and uh, news and business news and general news but it's only one post so you only need to create it one time and you can link it through to multiple different categories in this video we're going to be fundamentally focusing on posts i'm going to show you how you create posts how you create categories and how that kind of interacts with your website overall so let's take a look at how we can do that so we're in the admin section now of WordPress. And if you take a look on the left hand side, you can see all of the different options we have available to us. Now yours may look different to mine because I have additional plugins and different themes all installed, but you're gonna have the basic fundamentals with all of your WordPress installs. That's things like posts, media, pages, and so on. For this video, we're gonna concentrate solely on the post section. If we take our mouse over that, you can see we've got four different options available to us. We've got all posts, which allows us to list and see all of the posts we currently have available on our website. We can also go through and add a new one directly from here. We can see the categories and create new categories, which is just a way of grouping your posts together. And finally, we have tags, which is another way of grouping content together, but it uses it in a different way. We'll leave tags for now. It's something that's not that important for most smaller websites, and we'll look at that in another video in its own right. For now, we're going to concentrate on the first three options. So let's go through first of all and take a look at all posts. So if I click on that, that'll take us over and you can see all of the posts that I currently have installed or created on my website. Now to make life easier, WordPress splits all of your posts up into multiple rows and columns. So for example, you can see in a row, we've got the title, the author, which is great if you've got a website that's using multiple different people to add content, you can see who was logged in, who created the particular post. Next up, we've got the category or categories that the post is applied to. As you can see, some of these are in multiple categories, other ones are in single categories. Next up, we've got tags. So if we created tags, they would be listed there for us to see. And next that we've got comments. So like I said at the top of the video, your posts can have a comment thread underneath, which allows people to sort of interact with the post itself. Next up, we've got the date that this was published. So these are all great ways of being able to see exactly what content, when it's created, who created it, and so on. We've also got a set of filters on the top left-hand side. We can do things like bulk actions. We can go through and choose to look at the posts by date. We can also go through and look at the post by categories. We can then hit filter and that will filter out the information based upon the criteria that we've set inside the filter. We've also got on the right hand side a way of searching for the post so we can type in a word or phrase that we know is going to appear in one of our posts and we can then search through for all the results that have that particular phrase or word in. We've also got the ability to jump through and see multiple different pages worth of posts so we can skip through and we can see all of the information that's stored as part of posts in our WordPress. Okay, so that's the basics of seeing all the posts. The next thing you wanna do is go in and create a post. Now there are a couple of ways you can create a new post in WordPress. When you're in the all posts section, we could click on add new and that'll create a blank new post for us. We could alternatively go to the left hand side and choose all new from the posts submenu. And finally, we can come up and we can click on the plus and new and we can choose post from there. So any of these methods is going to give the same result. And what it's going to do is it's going to take us through to a blank post page where we can fill out the relevant information and create our new post. So for this example, we'll click on add new under the post list. And that'll take us through now into the actual editor itself. Now you can see we've got a post title. We've got an area to type our content in. Underneath that, we've got some theme specific settings. So you may not see these if you've got a different theme installed. So we're gonna close that up and completely ignore those. 
The same goes for the revolution slider options. That's because we've got a third party add-on installed in this particular website and that's some settings we're seeing for that. All you need to concentrate on is the post title and the actual post content itself. If we look on the right hand side, you can see we've got a range of different options available. Some of these are default as part of WordPress. Some of them are specific to the theme or plugins that are installed. So the publish option is part of WordPress itself. So everybody will have that unless it's turned off via the screen options at the top where we can easily go through and we can fine tune and tweak what's on any of the pages in the admin section itself. A great way of streamlining your interface to make sure you get rid of some of the clutter that's not relevant. So for example, if I wanted to take off the Ocean WP and the Revolution Slider options, I can uncheck those and you see now they're gone from the interface. If I want to turn them back on, I can simply go back at the screen options, select those and they'll reappear. Okay, so as I've said, publish is something that's specific to WordPress itself. So every installation of WordPress is going to have that available. It gives us some basic information. We can save an unsaved post or page or anything else as a draft, which means that it's in draft status. It's not going to be published on the site itself. Underneath that, you can see we've got the status, which currently is set to draft because we haven't saved this. You can click on edit and you can change it to any of the different options that are available. Underneath that, we've got visibility, which allows us to do things like set it to be public, password protected or private. And we just cancel that. And finally, we've got publish, which allows us to specify when this particular post is published. So if I wanted to, I could create the post today and schedule that to be actually made published in a week's time, a month's time, whenever I wanted to. So we've got great flexibility there should you want to create bulk content and schedule it to go out. Finally, we've got the publish option, which allows us to publish this. Once you've published it, you'll have that. That'll change and that'll go through to update if you make changes to it. Next up, we've got the post format. And you can see we've got a range of different formats available. Now, sometimes when you install a different theme, you will have more or less options available to you. What we're going to do for this one is we're going to leave this as a standard post because we're going to create some just basic content, give it a title and add an image to it. So very, very simple. Next up, we've got the categories. Now, every category that's been created will be listed in there. And you can also filter through if you want to, to most used. As I said at the top of this video, a post can be in multiple categories. So if you wanted that, you just simply click all the categories that are relevant for this particular post. And once you save or publish this, they will then be applied. Now, none of these things are written in stone. If you want to make changes to this, you make an, a mistake. You can easily come back in and edit this and make any amendments that you require. You can also quickly create a new category should you create a post and forget to create a category to associate it with. You can create that from here or you can use the categories option on the left hand side. OK, so next up we've got post attributes. Now, this is something that you can generally tend to leave as is. This is more sort of an advanced function to create different layouts. So leave that to the default template. And finally, we've got the featured image and the featured image, depending upon the theme that's being used, will be used in various different places in both the listing of your posts and the actual post itself. And we'll take a look at that once we create this post and I'll show you what it looks like on the front end of the website with the theme that I'm currently using. OK, so now that we've covered the basics of the interface, we're ready to go and create an actual first post. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give this a title and we're just going to call this sample post. And the next step, we're just going to go in and put some content in there. For this example, I'm just simply going to use some filler text, some lorem ipsum text. But if you were going to be working with Word or a program like that to create your content, and then you're going to copy that into your post inside WordPress, there's something that's really useful. And that's this little sort of clipboard icon that says paste as text. Now, the problem is when you use something like Word, Microsoft Word to create your content, when you copy and paste that, even though you're only copy and paste in the words, it takes over a load of underlying code that can override your theme. So it's always good practice to make sure you enable the paste as text before you put anything from Microsoft Word into your actual post or anything else inside WordPress itself. So once I've got that active, you can see it's highlighted. So I now know it's being activated. I can simply paste in using Control or Command V on my keyboard. That now puts the content in there. And if there's any underlying code, that would be stripped off and cleaned up so we'd have just the basic text. OK, so we've done the basics. We put in a title. We've given it some content. If I wanted to style any of this, I can do that. So let's just say, for example, I want to set this to be bold. I can highlight the text, 
click on the B for bold. If I make it italic, I can do that. If I want to create a link, I can insert a link. All very simple and straightforward. Okay, so we can fine tune and tweak our content to make sure we've got it exactly the way we like it. Once we've done that, we can just come over and we can set one more parameter for this particular example, and that's our featured image. So I'm going to set the featured image, I'm going to click, that'll take us over now to our media library. So anything we currently have uploaded will be listed inside there. If you don't have the picture you want to work with uploaded, you can simply drag and drop the image you want directly into this interface and it will upload the image for you. Alternatively, you can jump over to the upload file section and if you want to and you don't have drag and drop or you're not comfortable with that, you can simply use the select files click and that will open up the normal browser and you can then go through and find the image or image files that you want, select those, upload them and then they become available to you. For this example, I'm just going to simply use the media library and choose an image that I've got uploaded. So I'm going to choose this image and I'm going to say set featured image. Once that's done, you'll see on the right hand side now, we've got the set featured image is showing us a preview of that. Don't worry, they even look square, even though you might have a rectangular picture in there. This is just a preview of the image to show you that it's there. So once we've done that, I can simply click on publish and that will now become available inside the relevant categories and on my website. So if I hit publish, that will save that, make sure everything is in place. Then if we switch over to the front end of the website that you and the visitor sees, we can take a look at how that post is now actually being displayed. Okay, so we're now looking at a demonstration site that I've set up for this video tutorial. And if we take a look, you can see the way I've got things set up, it shows me a collection of the latest posts that have been added. And the first option in there is the sample post we just created. You can see there's a little snippet of the actual content, post title, so the date it was posted and the time, who the author is through their little sort of icon, and also the image that we uploaded as the featured image. So if I want to now, I can simply click on that. That'll take me over and show me the full post. So you can see the way that this particular layer is set up, that we've got this full width image in the background, our post title, and then we've got some sort of meta information about who posted it, the date it was posted, the folders and so on, categories that it's in. And then we've actually got the content underneath that. So you can see where we highlighted and made things bold, that's already emboldened, and everything is laid out nice and neat and tidy. It's all very simple and straightforward. Now let's just say that I wanted to make some changes to that because even though I've created it, I think actually I just want to put a picture in there to make it look a little bit more interesting or draw some attention to something. Can we do that? We can. Let's just jump back over to our post. and uh, As you can see, I'm in the editor. So what I can do now is let's just say I want to put an image in between these two paragraphs. I can make some space for the image and click on Add Media. That'll take us back into the Insert Media Browser. You can see all the images that we had uploaded or already listed there. So let's choose a different image this time. Let's choose this particular one of a photographer. Now you can see we've got some different information now available on the right hand side. Things we're looking for specifically is the attachment display settings. Because we've got this image and it's going to be clickable, we can specify what happens with it. So you can see we've got an alignment option. So we'll leave that set as none, but we can if we want to set it to left, center or right. Actually, for this example, let's say center. We can say link to, we have a range of different options. We can set it to none, so it just is the picture embedded in the actual content. With clicking on it, it does nothing. We can set it to click and view the media file, so it'll just take us over to a, a new page that'll show us just the photograph or the image. We can set it to an attachment page, and we can set it to a custom URL. So we've got a range of different options we can do in there. For this example, we're gonna leave it set to none. We've also then got a range of different sizes that we can choose from. You can see we've got thumbnail, medium, large, and full size. For this example, I'm gonna leave this set to large. And then I'm gonna simply click insert into post. And there we go. We've now inserted that into our post itself. So if I want to, if I click update now, and we just jump back over to our page on the front end of the website and refresh that, you'll see that now shows us the image in line inside our content. So very easy to be able to create and update content on the fly without any kind of hassle or problems. So that's how easy it is to go back and make any changes. So let's just jump back into the admin one more time and this time I'm gonna jump over and take a look at the categories option. So if I click on categories, that'll take us over now to all the categories that have been created inside our WordPress. So these only associate with posts. They're not related to pages or media or anything else. They're only specific to posts. So inside the category section, we can do various different things. We can edit any of the previously created categories. 
we can also go in and create a new category. So let's do both. First of all, let's create a new category and we'll just call this sample category. We click on add new. We don't want it to be a parent or to be parented to anything. Now it just, just basically means that we could have this as a subcategory of, for example, behind the image. For this example, we're gonna keep it simple and say add new category. And you can see once I've done that, that now appears inside the listing on the right hand side. Now let's just say, for example, I wanted to change the name of that. Well, I can easily come over, click on the name of the category. That'll take me through and I can now change any of the options that we had when we set the category up initially. So if I want to do something simple like change the name or add a description to this, I can do that right now. Or I could even hit delete to get rid of this category. So for this example, let's click delete. We get a confirmation box saying, are you sure you want to delete this? And we'll click OK. Now, obviously, you need to make sure that if you have posts associated with a category, and you delete the category, that they don't become orphaned. In other words, they're not associated with any category at all. And that really is the basics of categories, and we've covered posts. And that's all there is to creating new post-based content on your website in WordPress. Now, I hope that's given you a good head start into how to work with posts, how they differentiate themselves from pages, and how to work with categories, and how to create great content for your WordPress website. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button to be kept up to date with all the new content that is added every single week. If you have any comments, questions, or feedback on this video, or anything else we cover on the channel, please pop those in the comment section below. And until next time, take care.